Hello, everyone. This is Married to the Game, and I'm your host, Maria Martin, and I have an epic show planned for you guys. But before we get to that, a little bit of housekeeping. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving me positive feedback and for reaching out to me and telling me, hey, I didn't know this. It was so awesome to hear this. You know, that stuff really not only helps the podcast grow, but it helps me understand what you guys are interested in, what you like to hear, what you want to hear more of. So the feedback is fabulous. Keep it coming. All right. Epic episode. I'm telling you. So this is our first athlete wife that we've had on the show. Brittany Fultonevich. She is the wife of Mike Fultonevich, who pitched for the Braves. He's currently a free agent. So their life is kind of in limbo. They're, she talks about that a little bit. You know, they're kind of waiting to hear what the next step is. But Atlanta's been home for them for quite a few years. They're very comfortable here. Their kids know Atlanta. Um, they've lived all over the city and they just love Braves country. But that time is coming to an end. And she reflects on that a little bit, but she also just doesn't hold back at all. And that's something that I love about Brittany. And I knew that before. And you can tell kind of in her social media that she's just open and honest. And those are the kind of things that I just so appreciate. Buckle up. This one gets wild. Let's go. First of all, Brittany, thank you so much. I really appreciate you doing this because... You know, I've wanted to talk to you for a long time because I see your social media. I know that you're super outspoken and that you've got a great personality. So appreciate you coming on. No problem. I'm super interested. Like I listened to the last two with Ronnie and Rick and I feel like they probably live used to like, I don't know. I feel like everybody's in the same area. We like all live in the same Georgia bubble. I know. It was pretty interesting to hear football stories because you don't hear those often yeah Um, yeah and especially for you Ronnie because she kind of has like um angelic stories like (laughs) I feel like my stories are more like chaotic than like oh precious memory well hers were probably at the same time the same thing so they evolved like this yeah and that makes sense and I think you know for you give a totally different perspective too because you're a player's wife and obviously you know you're living through things a little bit differently than you know what Ronnie would be today's world's a little different than back in the old days (laughs) yeah (laughs) they didn't have cell phones you know now like people got like 10 phones Yes. And things are obviously very, very different. And uh, yeah. you know, one of the things that you and I were talking about before, your last name, Fultonevich. Yeah, it's People hard actually to get it right. right after that. Yeah. So um, it's Fultonevich, I had to Google it when I first met Mike. Um, I had no idea how to say it, but I wanted to make sure, like, you know, I thought I had it right, but I wanted to make sure. And then they'll spell it out on Google and it's like Fultonevich and it's like super <laughs> kindergarten. So that works. I think I should get that printed up for our, like our playroom. So like our kids can learn how to say it. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure that there's no way they say Fultonevich, right? No. So I start, he can say his first, my son can say his first name. He's two turning three. But I'm trying to get him to say his last name. But I feel kind of bad saying, like, I started saying yesterday, like, your last, what's your last name? Full T. And I just kept saying that. But I feel bad because it's not the real last name. <laughs> like, I like it as a nickname. But, you know, you kind of feel bad. Like, Mike's sitting there watching me. And I'm like, I don't know if his ancestors are rolling in the game. Like, <laughs> oh full T. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So I know, like, old school people kind of take it seriously. But. But I mean, that's what everyone calls him. Everyone calls him Fulty anyway, because I feel like yeah. even, you know, people that covered him, Fulton Evans is hard. It doesn't look yeah. the way that no it No one takes out. it to heart on the Fulty. He likes it. It's easier. I usually use it for like pizza orders. So You do? Um, yeah. I don't really go, because if I use the full name, people will catch on faster. I was going to say, it's not like, ask. yeah, it's not like you guys have the last name Smith or something. So I'm sure. No, they'll be like, is he out in the car? And I'm like. <laughs> Got a weird. Yeah. He <laughs> no. won't come in. He's like, he won't come in just because he's faulty. He won't come in because he doesn't know where to go to pay and like he doesn't know the setup of the place. Like, totally fair. Like, mm-hmm. So you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Wait, so you have, okay, so you got it's you have a son and you have a daughter too, right? Yeah. So I have Irish twins. So this month my daughter's turning two and my son will turn three in February. So for a couple of weeks we'll have two two year olds. Oh but my like, god! Eleven months apart. So for three weeks out of the year, we have like two of the same ages. So last year we had two one-year-olds. This year we'll have two two-year-olds. But it'll even out the two and three. 
February, March, or January, February. I can't even keep it straight because they're so, one was born in January the year before class, and then the other one was born in February the two years before that, so. So. 11 months apart. <laughs> you have two under the age of five right now. Yeah, so when I was pregnant with, I was pregnant with Lola and Jet was under a year old. Oh my gosh. So I had, uh, he, but he didn't even turn, Lola was born and celebrated his first birthday. Like, <laughs> super, super unconventional baseball life. But like at the time it made sense because we're living in Atlanta, we're playing with Atlanta. Like we were in our years or not in, like we were just hitting our with him baseball. So we knew we had time. We were probably going to be here for a little bit. I'm glad that you brought up the kid thing because, you know, Levi and I, we haven't gotten to the kid stage yet, but we've talked about planning on when to get pregnant because I've yeah. told him, I'm like, look, listen, I'm not going to be by myself during football season. I can't do it. Right. It's my it's, job it's, and everything. So like, do you, do you plan that? So a lot of people plan that, but like a lot of people will try and spring training for a baby for the off season. Right. That's a lot of wives goals. Um, doesn't always happen that way. Obviously, start, You don't want to like get pregnant in January. Like you don't want to start trying in January and then playoffs hit and you're like, they can't even come home. Yeah. I think Jet was born in spring training. So I had a doctor here that I went to Gosh. all the way up until 37 weeks. And then we like 36 weeks. And then we drove down to Florida because we were like, let's get down there early. So we got down there in like end of January. I met my doctor on Tuesday. Mike was flying down to Arizona to fight an arbitration case on Friday. He was coming back Saturday. Or no, he was flying out Thursday, coming back Friday night. So we had Jet on Saturday. Oh my gosh. Again, met my doctor on Tuesday. I was so swollen. I had Gucci shoes on. I'll never forget it. And Mike goes, honey, don't you think that doesn't look good? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? I know I'm fat. Like, I know. Like, I know I'm fat. My mom's like, oh, yeah, it kind of does look a little swollen. And I'm like, oh, you know, my I don't God. Drink water. I know, I know. You know, I'm panicking. So we so go to the doctor you, and my doctor meets me. Baby? She met me and she goes, she looked at my feet and she's like, and like Jet, Mike's like, doesn't her Gucci shoes look like they're about to pop off? And like, Do they? <laughs> she's like, I think we should admit you to Winnie Palmer tonight. Like, so... Like me and Mike met her, but then she called me back and she's like, I think you, she took a test there and she's like, I think you need to go to the hospital. Mike flew out right after that. And me and my mom had to like pack our bags and go to Winnie Palmer. And I'm like, not sure if I'm having a baby or like, I don't know what I was packing for. I'm like, oh, we're not really having a baby yet. Right. Not right. I just brought my doctor. She's going to have, like I had a planned C-section all along because my baby was like, Jet was like a hundred percent head, body, like. If I got his head out, I don't think I'd get his stomach out was the next issue. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do a C-section. No. Yeah, I need to like be walking and like on with my life real quick here. So <laughs> I planned a C-section like 18 weeks in with my doctor. So that was my nerve thing. I've never had surgery. So I was like, I don't know. Like I met, just met this lady and she's going to be like cutting me open. Yeah. So here I am like this big this low. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> make it small. <laughs> so, like, you know, I was like real. So this guy that was a Brazilian doctor that was in the operating room, the second doctor in the room, he made it real small for me. That's he said, great. A Brazil, this guy would be proud. So I was like, okay. But, so it all turned out good, but Mike had flown back. Like one, like, what did he do? Lost it? I think he lost. He lost his arbitration case, came back, and we still had Jet that day, like the next day. So it was, it worked out. I have to even think back, like, did we win or lose? Like, what? Like, I'm pretty sure that, that was matter. a win like, for like, you. <laughs> right. I don't know that you were probably thinking about that anymore once you found out you were going to have no, a baby. No, I was like cooped up in this hospital, but it was like the best women's hospital you could have. Like, I had menus. Like, we can never deliver a kid in Orlando at Winnie Palmer. Like, it's a women's <laughs> Noted. <children>. Noted. Like, <laughs> They have masseuse people. I didn't even make it to my masseuse because I got it like, dis like discharged and I laughed up like I'm out. Oh left my, my massage. I'm like donated to some woman that needs it. Like <laughs> that's nice. I'm that's nice of you. <laughs> but I mean, they had menus. So I was like, Mike. Mike was still going to spring training. So like, I had the baby even after I had Jet. Like he had to report in the morning to spring training the next day and then still come after. And it was like an hour drive from where spring training was in Orlando. So. 
So did you, um, we've, we've skipped right to babies, which is great. And I love this conversation, but did you, um, did you have to totally switch doctors because you were about to have a baby basically when spring training was, is that why you did that? Yeah. So I had to plan it. Like I had to find a doctor down in Florida ahead of time. Oh my gosh. And then, and then, and a pediatrician. So he did go see a pediatrician down in Florida for one or two visits. That was really weird. Wow. So that was that, like, it's, it was super awkward, but it's, it's been done. <laughs> have, you said it's been done. Are there other wives that have done that? Yeah. Cause I was not the only like baseball wife that they had had or like athlete's wife that's done this. Like somebody else from, I think Detroit had delivered over there too. I've heard horror stories. Like I've heard of people like literally like holding their babies in waiting for their husbands to walk in. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> no, like there's like, if you ask Nancy Flowers, who has five kids, she has delivered one of them, I believe, in Chicago during a game. Tyler was catching. He couldn't leave at the time. And another wife was in the delivery room. <laughs> I'm just not That's that insane. open of a person. But, like, she, she's a godsend. So. I guess you got to do what you got to do. I mean, y- I, you heard the episode with Ronnie. She was talking about kind of the same thing, that there was a wife that was delivering, and she just she had to go because she didn't have family or, or anybody else there. Mm-hmm. I can believe it. Like we've been lucky. So we took the leap of faith and bought here when we moved here. So yeah, we've, like lived here. It's been home. So we've always like kind of built a little net around when we planned to have kids. Like we had a neighbor to watch the dogs, like, all that stuff. So. Yeah, that doesn't totally shock me. Cause when I, I interned, when I was in college, I interned for the Grizzlies. And I remember in the middle of a game, Zach Randolph, just left and I was like what's going on and they were like oh his wife's in labor and I was like all right see you later just left in like the second quarter and was just like all right I gotta go but yeah. it, it happens I mean it depends on the site like so that I think that was September so of course that's an yeah. important day for baseball so he had to stay um but that's your chances I mean but so then you get your Mike, offseason season baby was Mike grateful then that it was spring training and not like the playoffs or something oh yeah he was grateful. I don't think he would care. <laughs> like he is not into like all that. That's so, right. Um, I think if my third child, if I had a third baby, I'd be like, yeah. just send us off, and we'll just send you a picture. <laughs> it's like you kind of want that time alone, anyways. And even like post baby, like we were in a yeah. rental home in spring training, so it wasn't our house. God, we, I had to bring my baby home, and our rental home was so nasty. Like we bring a Dyson with us everywhere we go. Sure. And this one had carpet, and I swear I vacuumed up like a German Shepherd out of the carpet. And I was Ew. Like, Ew. With a brand new baby. $15,000 for this place for like 45 days, and it has like nasty. Does so that just never clean like, What the heck? I don't know. It gave me like post baby blues, kind of. <laughs> I'm like, this is in our house. Like, we got to take this U haul SUV back home to get home. Like, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so, well, I. Kind I- of- I'm glad that uh, you kind of dived in on the craziness of the baseball life right away, but I want to rewind before babies and before all of that. How did you guys meet? Oh, so he, we actually are from the same area, like back in Illinois. We went to the same high school. We didn't really know him at all. He's younger than me. So he was born in 91. I'm born in 89. Okay. So there's like two and a half year difference there. And he... All his friends are younger siblings of all the friends I used to hang out with. So it's like so-and-so's little brother, and then like that's Mike's best friend. Okay. But when, like, we're from such a small town, like, when I turned 18, I was like, I'm out of this place. Like, see you later. Yep. Lived on my own, whatever. Lived downtown, like, happy, like, just living my life. And then he comes in my inbox, like, you're, like, after how old was I 24 25 like I don't know I've already like lived so much life I feel like from 21 to 24 and um, I was just not looking for anything and he just messaged me he came out of like a long relationship though so so you guys kind of knew of each other basically we knew of each like it was the same circles it was felt like home if I talked about something he knew what I was talking about like all the same people, all the same. Basically, you, ha- you were already out, but then Mike slid in the DMs when you were already gone. So I was moving in the process of moving from Illinois to Arizona. I persuaded my sister to um, do pharmacy school out in Arizona. I'm like, let's do it. This is the time. Me and you, sister life. We're going to like live it up, right? 
me and my mom already dropped off all our shit in Arizona. We drove, sorry, I'm sorry. Already so drove fine. out there in this like 26 foot Penske truck that only goes 70 miles an hour from Illinois to Scottsdale. Get the place. Me and her had to haul it up. We, we, we were spoiled. We got a garage attached so we didn't have to like live in the heat. That's nice. <laughs> Super nice. the stairs, get all settled in, and then here's Mike in the DMs, like, like starting something. And I'm like, great. You know, like, I'm still moving out here. Like, so I move out there. He heads to spring training, and he was like, I think I had moved. I think I had visited him out in spring training before I moved to Arizona. I had taken the last flight from Illinois down to Florida to see him. So I basically met him and didn't know him. <laughs> You just knew of him, but, but, but not really. of him. But like, I was like, this is the only time spring training starting, but he's got free time. Cause during spring training, they're done after one o'clock. And like, after that, like we can hang out. So it worked. So I was like, this is the time. If I'm going to take this leap of faith, like do it. So I went out there. <laughs> I remember him picking me up and I was like, what am I doing? I think he had rims on his car at the time too. So it was like this Denali. <laughs> With like big black rims on it, <laughs> and he like pulls up in the airport at Orlando. Oh my Orlando. gosh! And I like get in, and I'm like, I think he had like teal shorts on, and I was like, hey. <laughs> I love that you remember like, that. That's he's like hey. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's so reserved. He's an only child, so like, I'm not that reserved. So I could like make friends with a stranger if I'm like feeling up to the challenge. So I was like all bubbly and I like opened the wrapper on him kind of like yeah. the chocolate bar kind of like needs to be like opened up a little bit. So here I am like, all right, I'm going to make the best of this. Like worst case, we're sleeping in separate beds tonight. And like, yep. I got to go to the bathroom. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm holding my life in till 8 a.m. or whatever, whatever time we right. sleep in. Right. Um, so it worked out. Like we just kind of like, I was like this weird soul. He's so loving, but like, he's so quirky and fun. So it like, works. But when I met him, I was like, I don't know if this is going to go well. Cause his, per like he didn't show his personality right away. So I was like, Oh, what do but you do? The teal shorts and the Denali, the rims on he the Denali. Like a, he wore Vans. With and the like, teal shorts? Like, He'd be like a, but like a van shirt or like vans. <laughs> he just dressed like a college kid. And I had dated, like, I was coming from like dating older guys and like, I was like looking for somebody mature with their shit together. And like, I'm like, I don't know. This guy just like, is he just some guy that like picks up chicks on the internet? Like, oh, but he wasn't. Oh, so, no, he turned out to be like normal. So I was like, okay. So he was like sitting back, like eating pizza and like, okay. I was like, okay, Papa John's good. We don't have to go to some awkward dinner and like. Love that. Okay. And I ended up learning like, now I know that like the fanciest place he wants to go is like Benihana. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. Like, funny. Like, laid backness is kind of like too, almost way too laid back. I'm like, okay, well. I mean, you said you're not really like the baseball guru, but you kind of knew if Mike was pitching and things were wrong, right? I learned it all from him the first spring training dating, basically. Oh, so did he, like, teach you that or, or what? I learned through Twitter. Well, that's, that's <laughs> probably like, a bad place like, to learn. People's you know. criticism on Twitter, I learned. Yeah, and that's... I didn't learn the pitches probably until, like, two years in. Okay. I didn't, I didn't understand, like, like, I just knew a slider. When they talk about a slider, it, like, drops off the table. <laughs> there you go like I, I watch it on tv unless it says slider i don't like i don't like now i can't i'm better at it now i know but now it's taking this long break i gotta like you gotta get back to the person that's like i know for a fact <laughs> we need to get you some flashcards i feel like i know the trade system better than like the play system <laughs> i feel like that's more than a lot of people know yeah, like, I feel like I know, like, I know watching a game, like, who's about to be, like, out of here, or, like, watching this, like, storm go on, I can make my pretty right predictions. Okay. I'm pretty self-aware of, the, like, that going on, but, like, I'm not aware of, like, pitch, like, stuff. But if, but if something's going wrong whenever Mike has an outing, you get it. Oh, yeah, it's awkward. You don't even know what you're going to say. What do you say? <laughs> Oh, I'm still learning. Like, they, because some methods work and some don't. 
Yeah, you just or have some to, like, days, like, oh, you've said that all the time now. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so you got to keep it fresh. Well, you... Most of the time, I just play my role of just, if he wants to go there, go there. He's probably already... Yeah. Somebody's already texted him to go there about it. Like, mom and dad, relative, ex co like... So I don't want to be the extra tick on his back. Like, so you just kind of, like, stay fun. quiet and just kind of yeah. like do your own thing. I used to bring it up and you'd be like, not right now, Brittany. And this is just, like, kill the air. Like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I get it. Thanks. <laughs> looking out the window, like, in tears, looking at fans, like, I'm going home with the Grinch. <laughs> oh, my God. Did that ever happen? Did you cry on the way home? Oh, there's been times of, yeah. Maybe not even that. I'm like, this, like, slow down, don't turn. But that guy turned. <laughs> just so mad. He's and then that'll like, ignite a fight. Because we used to live in West Cobb, so it would be like a 45 minute drive home. Oh, man. You know, and like it, when you're getting out of a game and you've been there since maybe 11, or if you pitched, he got there at like 3 or 3.30, and it's 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, and he's fighting like the traffic out there. He wants to go home, so he's like kind of like getting antsy, and I'm right. just sitting there like, just want to be safe yep like you just you want know, to get you don't that's want to also, be like the old grandma either so you just kind of be quiet i'm just quiet that's also like a really long car ride it's so long <laughs> and he'll like stop and get like dip because he's tried to quit dipping like a million <laughs> times <laughs> but he's he didn't like, he's like a better person without it like with it actually like it's almost like you know what i don't think you're at the time in your life where you're, you're gonna part with this <laughs> so you just let it go stressful job like you have a really stressful job so it's fine like that's and that's, you're around it too so like the, that's all over like when after games that you've seen it it's so dirty and disgusting it's yes just like, yes i don't know how you could quit and be around it like there's players that used to buy him like pl- other players logs every month so you'd have it in your locker whether you were <laughs> Rather he liked it or not, it was. I think either. the guy that was doing that caught on that one month he did quit. With, he said he was quitting when the kids were born, and like you're did like, he? oh, that's so sweet. And then like two months later, you're like, I can't deal with you raging and a newborn screaming. So just oh throw a dip in. God, I, that's something I never thought I would date somebody that dip. I didn't even know what that was. I was like, he had like a spitter like the first weekend I was with him and I was like what the fuck is that so many baseball <laughs> players have it and it's I've accidentally sipped out of like because he spit in a Starbucks cup like a hot cup and I didn't know we both at the time had hot coffees one morning we get Starbucks every single day so now I will never order a hot drink because I sipped it and he gets a vanilla latte so it was like vanilla with oh and I was like <laughs> are you serious that is oh the God, best thing I've ever heard I was like, why would you spit? Did it, it, maybe he didn't know. In his defense, let's, let's pretend like he didn't know. No, like everything in his defense is a spitter. <laughs> so like, I maybe it was guys like that used to just spit in their trucks. There's guys that like have so much money that he'd tell me about like, they'll just spit in their truck on the floor. Ew. And when At least he like, doesn't do that, right? And they'll never clean it. Like it's like a work truck. I'm like a spit oh, truck. that's so gross. Here's your drinks. Have a supersonic day. Nick, in the morning, you don't even you don't even speak full words, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, Nick, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> All right. I don't look forward to any other drink like I do my morning drink. Sonic's morning drink stop. Large drinks for 99 cents and large specialty drinks for $1.49 before 10 a.m. For contactless ordering and payment, order ahead in the Sonic app. Tax not included. See menu for details for a limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Mobile ordering available only at select locations. Do you want do you want your son to play baseball? Or does Mike want him to play baseball? Jet loves to throw things, but he has no interest in hitting. I'll watch like other people's kids love to hit the ball and they're like great at it from like six months old. Yeah. <laughs> my kids my daughter hits the ball like the ball more on the tee more That's than Jet. It. But it's just not Jet's like thing. He likes to throw things. So but he, he just will never hit it. it. Yeah, and he's also really good at like he'll put a slide, he'll find someone's slide put it on his foot and he'll flip it, like kick it up in the air. Like he thinks it's a game. But he's pretty good. Like <laughs> he's hit stuff. I'm like, wow, 10 points. Like, oh my gosh. Impressed. But like, I just don't know what he's going to do. And I'm kind of open. I watch Smolty all the time say like, let them play, let them play, do what they want. And Mike is so good at every sport. So I think it'll just, he'll figure out what he wants to do when the time comes. So it'll probably be like a mascot, honestly. He like, 
<laughs> loved Brave Games. He'd be like the one chopping that was like 10 months old chopping and like he just lived for it. He would clap for all the tunnel employees. They'd be down there after games waiting for the fireworks to take people out down to the fireworks and he would chop and they would like clap for him and he'd clap for them and like that's so he nice. always waved at the, all the security guards. So there was a lot of good memories with like him there. Well, we got it. We didn't get to do it last year. So he right. doesn't know the chop anymore. That's how fast it like kind of fades. Well, plus I think he if he little. heard it and he was in the zone, he'd do it. But but he was what? He was like a year old, right? When you guys were. Yeah. So he was a year old. You know, when the anthem comes on to put his hand over his chest and we'd be quiet. Because at that time during the game, me and him were usually up on the concourse, just walked in like sweating disheveled like, yeah like <laughs> we're here and they're like this crazy lady like dressed slightly inappropriate to be by herself at a baseball game <laughs> but that's not like inappropriate but like obviously didn't park like in the freaking redneck or whatever. <laughs> so did know. you did you ever sit with the other wives or was it just kind of like a game by game basis Oh, so we have a wife. So it was a family section and it's in the stadium and it's by one of the, dug- like by the dugout. Um, so it's on the right. I won't give it away too much for, it gets a little crazy over there sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's in the right field side. So um, it was originally on the second level when they had opened the park. It was yeah. on the second level. And if you're from, like, if you've been in there, all the elevators are in that, like, indoor shaft in the middle behind home plate. So it gets a little crazy before and after the game, like, waiting for an elevator to get up there because you have all those concourse, like, all those people are coming up through the elevator to sit in regular seats and the suites. So yep. it gets crazy. So when they open the park, like, I think the first year we had, to, like, Chelsea Freeman like, made a docu-sign for all of us to sign a petition, like, what we wanted and moved and like changed because we walked in and they showed us stuff and I was like oh no this isn't gonna work like like what this lady has three kids how is she gonna make it from the parking deck over there go through security here and then go to the family room and then get to a seat like come on like there's no there's no and then after the game it was in such a bad place like it was so far from the players like you would have to leave before the game's over to get to your car and get the hell out of there to get home to make oh my dinner. gosh. <laughs> oh, so did you guys so, change it? So we did a big docu sign. We changed it. Braves are really great. They're super family oriented. Um, they will listen to you. Um, we like when we first came to the Braves, we had a family room at Turner Field, and it was pretty big because it was Olympic sized stadium. Yeah, but like it wasn't much in there. Some couches. I try not to go in there at first because like. There's a lot of unwritten rules in baseball. Like you don't okay. Tell me about necessarily the unwritten rules in baseball. go in the family room if you're not married. So Which you you weren't yet, or were you? No, we weren't at the time. Like this is okay. when the season started. We were just new, but we were actually just had committed to like living together. So okay. we only talked for like six, five or four months before we literally lived together full on, kind of for the season because there was no way to make it work. Right, West Coast, East Coast. So we just. And I didn't have a job in Arizona yet. So I was like, what am I, like, Might as why well. get established and then leave? Okay, so yeah, you don't really want to like go in there. Cause like these wives are intimidating as shit. I bet. Your girlfriend, like, and I, I didn't know what I was getting into. First of all, my first game, Mike wasn't even with the Braves on the big team roster when we first started this whole journey. He was in Gwinnett, I believe at the time. And he got his call up right in the beginning of spring I was nannying back in Illinois. I dropped the kid. He had a game that night, 7 p.m. It was like Friday. I was like, okay, I got to make it to Atlanta. Like, how am I going to do this? I didn't have like that much money to just like go buy a flight and be like, yo, hey. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I worked. I lived on my own. It wasn't like I just have like all this money to just be like, hey, I'm on this. Like, so I rented this like cheap little car that I knew I wouldn't have to fill up much, but get tons of miles. And get me there without having to stop a bunch in sketchy places alone. So I it was like this Hyundai, like it was like a Hyundai Eminem little like something, <laughs> like a Yaris, four door Yaris. <laughs> and I just dropped the kids off at Naperville, Illinois, like school. Dropped them like, bye, see ya, I'm off for the weekend. And I drove straight to Atlanta. I did. I stopped like one time to pee in like freaking Chattanooga. <laughs> That's what, like an eight hour drive. 
I parked at Turner Field. I parked right behind the players' lot. There was like a long lanes for buses to park. Like the Fox Sports bus would park there. I'd yeah. Pull up, <laughs> park. I run around the whole building. It's it was seven ten, seven fifteen. I la- like I get to Atlanta right in time for the game. No time to change. Whatever I wore that morning. You're gonna and all his family was there. So I'm like, you're gonna have to meet these people looking however the frick you look. I had met his mom. I'm not sure if I met her there or met her for I the first time. His parent. I, yeah, I can't remember. It was so long ago. Though. I met them alone now, and he was pitching. It might have been a Gwinnett game that was like on okay. TV. Okay. Where it was after this meeting, but they wanted to kill each other. <laughs> like, so I go to meet them. <laughs> Mike's like, go meet my parents. They're great. He probably was like, act, be on your best behavior, please. Because he knows how they act when they watch a game. So I go over there, and it's his mom in one chair on the other side of the living room and his dad on the other side. And <laughs> it's kind of tense. The game comes on, the like, screaming starts, like yelling at the TV. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm just kind of sitting on the floor in the middle and his dog was there. And I, like the dog's like hiding scared of them yelling, like goes downstairs and hides. And <laughs> I was like, all right, well, they're just really diehard. My grave fans. Like, all right. That's what I'm getting into. Wow. So that was it. That's kind of. That I went over there a few times to watch the game, and, and like there'd be times she's like, "I'm gonna get a gun," and I like point the BB gun at him. If he say one more word about my son, I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> oh <my> gosh! <laughs> I'm like, Ooh, okay, I'm gonna have I like, That was a lot like, right off the bat, for sure. I was like, okay, well, I know my parents are not this level about me, at least. So <laughs> you never know. We're going to be okay. Like, I don't think he's going to think my family is, like, super crazy that they kind of are, too. Like, it's going to work. It might be are you that way now about Mike when you watch him play baseball? No, I try not to watch. You Really? So, I believe, like, I'm bad luck. So, sometimes I'll believe I'm bad luck because he'll have some of his best games when I'm not there. So, okay. So, if you're not in the – but you watch, right? I watch until it starts to go south and then I shut the shit off and I do just, really yeah because everybody's gonna text me and the details anyways right. I could watch a game just off Twitter and know what the hell's going on <laughs> and it's just like a it's a downfall <laughs> like if you just look up faulty you're just gonna see enough hate that you're like okay I know where we're at or enough love and I'm like okay we're going good one yeah, or the was, other I was gonna say Twitter is Twitter is a, a dark place most of the time when it comes to sports. And you I'm try sure... not to look, but you try to understand too yeah. other people's perspectives or see like I'm trying to understand what the front office is thinking after that outing. So yeah. I want to see what the fans are saying. But then I realized they're so wrong sometimes. <laughs> yeah, like there was one the other day, I think it said like Yankees are interested in him, but like out of all the teams I know he's talked to this off season, that's not one of them. So that's just like completely off. So I'm like, okay, interesting. It, people, <laughs> people also throw things out there and just hope it sticks. Or you know what I mean? Bait. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, oh, okay. I only take it as a grain of salt, but I do take it because I, I feel like I don't look anymore, but like I used to just want to be aware. I wanted to be so aware of everything, but it gave me anxiety. Like, I'm so sure when I go out public, I'm like, is that person really, is that like the scumbag that's like typing behind the keyboard or is that like? <laughs> you know, like you even said it, a lot of the times with baseball players, the, the stigma is, you know, they're a player, this, that, and the other. Was that kind of like a... Oh, I, I said that right off the bat. I was like, you're a player. And like, so that was a concern. Whole, oh, we're not all the same. We're not all the same. We're not of course, they all say that. But were you ever concerned about that? Men are men and men are from concrete and they're all made out of the same material. So, I mean, like, <laughs> you know, like, you, it's like give a mouse a cookie, he'll want a like, glass of milk. I don't, like that, it's hard for them, but they're stupid. And I think the only way you're going to learn is trial and error. Like, I mean, there's probably people out there that live this spot-free life that, like, have never strayed or gotten into this DM that kind of went a weird direction that wasn't their intention. Or, like, if you give, like, some people, you'll give them one ounce of kindness and they'll think, like, oh, he talked to me. Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, we talked to <laughs> Like, what? Yes. And then, like, or, like, I there was girls in AAA that would make, like, cupcakes for players and stuff. And I remember wives would kind of 
take it personal and i'm like maybe she's just not there in the head i don't know like maybe wait so just random fans yeah there would be like fans that but like they're not like they're making cupcakes but they're not like too far off the menu like they're not like little kids and they're not like old ladies they're like 20 That's year old so interesting college or like but kind of like their moms are like i don't know like they, they're just kind of baseball groupie like families but like the girls are kind of there if they can get some of them, like take it you know like, if these cupcakes get me like did it work like, not for mike but for no, other i don't girls. think i don't think nobody of those ones like if you're making them shit like that they're probably like no thanks well thanks thank you that's so sweet thank you thank you appreciate but I don't it think they're no. like gonna go slide in her dms after thanks for that is just the strangest thing that's really weird. like those those are the ones that you're like those are harmless those are just those are like they're like instead of boy bands that's their dream crush those right. are the ones you can't but you kind of look at like some of them you kind of question you're like oh, i'm not sure well baseball i'm sure has a lot of of girls like that like they'll be sad and it'll be funny because like you'll know the guy the player and you'll know where he is in his career and you'll see them come around but then you'll see that they figure out where they are at in their career and it's not where they thought they were huh. yeah, or it wasn't the lifestyle they thought or like the grind because i'll meet people in triple like when mike went down to triple a when was it a team so 18, I show up with Lola, who was like I don't know, six months. Jet is like a year old. So I got double little shit stroller I bought in like short. Like we had to go to like all these little crap towns. Not crap towns, but like little stadiums. The hotels are not anything that we're used to. We have to drive there. And our, like I'm driving there because his only option is taking a bus back after the game back to Gwinnett two or three hours and yep. getting in at 4 a.m. Then he has to get in his car from Gwinnett and drive all the way to West Cobb or wherever we were living. And I'm like, no, we're going to go. Like, see ya in Charlotte. So there was times we drove to Charlotte when he was down there. And we would go and, like, go to the game, do all that, like, all the way back. Bring him with us. And, like, I think when people start to see that stuff, they're like, this isn't glamorous. Or, like, guys in the minor league, they, like, shack up in two guys in a hotel room. Some guys have to sleep on the floor in, like, two other guys' room to, like, have a girl come down or, like, I don't know, it's weird. I did have a funny story with <laughs> a side chick. So that okay, was, go ahead. It wasn't, it wasn't, like, related to Mike, but, like, it was another player at the time. So you'll get, like, at times you'll get, like, teams. Like, teams will get, like, new guys every year, right? So right. it kind of changes here and there, but when you get, like, a bigger name, it's like, oh, <laughs> like, you get a bigger ego with it. So True. it's it's interesting. Hang on, let me catch my breath on this one. It's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is gonna be good. This is those ones you hear and you're like, oh, this is, I'm never gonna like see these shit like this shit. This is like unwritten shit. So um the guys are playing in Atlanta and like why do you do a fly out during the last game, a home stand game if they're going on the road? So it was like what Thursday? And what did we do? So I already flown out that afternoon. I check in after three. I'm there. Like I got in at like 7 p.m. The game. I'm watching the game on TV. They're in Atlanta. They fly out after the game. They go to the hotel. It's like DC. Where was we? Like DC. This. <laughs> I'm sitting in the hotel room. I ordered pizza, and the fucking door opens. I'm in like my pajamas. Like I just text Mike. Like ordered the pizza. Like whatever. The door opens. I'm in the Ritz call, like wherever. Like the this nice ass hotel and the fucking door open. And I had, it had the key. Yeah. Like with the key. I had it. No, I did not have it locked. She walks in. She's standing there and she's like looking at me and I'm looking at her. It was like the like what's that movie with Lindsay Lohan? Like Freaky Friday. Thing. And I'm yes. like, looking at her and I'm like, oh no. Like, I'm going to kill him, you know, like, and she goes, she's like, what's your name? And I was like, Brittany. And I was like, what's your name? And she was like, I forgot her name, but she goes, oh, I'm in the wrong room. I was like, she going to give me the key to the wrong room. And I was like, okay. I was like, who are you with? And she said this player's name. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. But I'd never seen her before. 
So I was like, all right, interesting. Okay, not, thank God, the whole, I was like saying prayers. Not mine, okay. <laughs> like, never have to come face to face with my biggest like stress or worry in my life. Like, not like it's my biggest thing, but it's like not something right. you ever want to just like, well, it will hit you when you're not expecting it. And that's when I was like, okay. So she goes down to the front desk. I hear them come back and they put her in the room next to me. So I'm like, <laughs> putting your ear on the side of the wall. I got in my ear on the wall. I'm like about to get a cup off the like, <laughs> to be like, what's going on? What is this? <laughs> it's masterful. And, uh, oh my gosh. I hear they, they get her in a room, right? And um, I hear the door shut. I hear her on the phone a minute. I can't hear what she's saying, whatever. I'm, I'm like, God, this is none of my business at this point. Go sit down. I hear the lobby people come back and they take her out of her room and she disappeared. I don't know. So I text Mike and I was like, holy shit. Like, this girl just walked in my room and said she was with so and so. And this doesn't like, whatever. And He's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. He's taking a shower, right? What did he say to him? He's like, oh, tell your wife, you know, she'll never see her again. Don't worry about it. Sorry, that lady's crazy, blah, blah, blah. Like some fan. Like, don't worry. Like, she's just a stalker. So <laughs> Mike's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Mike's like, <laughs> that's when I'm like, okay, what the, like, which one's the story here? Like, if I'm coming from that player's side and I have to hear his story. What am I thinking now? Like that's a stalker? Like a stalker could just <laughs> so I don't know if you're a liar or like there's really stalkers out here. So I'm concerned. Like, okay. So I was like, Mike's like, hey, he said that you're never gonna see her again. And I was like, it's already done. Just, they came and got her. She's gone. She's gone, yeah. <laughs> and I like the next game I'm like looking around like, is she here? Is she here? Did like, you ever see her? No. Wow. Wait, so was she really a stalker or we don't know? <laughs> I don't know. What in the world? Fucking magic. <laughs> That's crazy. See, this right? is the kind of stuff that people don't think about. No, this is the good stuff. I was like, you guys have such nice people on here. Like, you don't want me on here because I know, like, I've seen the... I've seen the no, plot. I wanted you on here because I knew you would tell me good stories like this. After and I think what happened was after, I think after that happened, I swear to you, was I pregnant with Joe at the time? I might have been pregnant with Joe at the time. I get in the elevator after that happened because that, where we were was by Hagen Dawes. And I'm like, I'm going to get a milkshake. <laughs> Too much stress. <laughs> this was like the next day because I think me and Mike were kind of bickering, like, tell me more. Like, what was it really? Right. Like, like you weren't going to let it go. Like, like you're not going to tell me? Like, I'm your, like, soul sister here. <laughs> I'm your soul sister. <laughs> <laughs> tell me all this stuff and, you know so I was kind of like I get in the elevator I'm like pissed you know I'm like oh fuck these dudes I get in the elevator <laughs> and it's Matt Kemp Freddie Freeman and then um Julio Teron had like a assistant at the time and it's all these big names in this elevator and I'm and you <laughs> I'm like in the gym I like a sweatshirt and shorts and just throw some shoes on to go get some ice cream and I'm just like Probably was just crying behind doors, like, this is terrible, <laughs> terrible. And then I see them, and I'm like, hi, how are you? It was the longest three floors down to civilization. Like, you didn't say anything? I said, like, hi, and I tried to, like, but they could probably tell that my, like, ass, <laughs> like, they could tell, like, because I was, like, you know when the, like, elevator opens, and, like, you're not expecting yes. people to be seen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're like about ready to just walk away from the hell you just seen and you're like that's what happened I was like great what's the worst thing that you've heard somebody say to Mike oh my god I've heard it all the Dodger fans they're really bad and yep. they yep. Oh, the one playoff year that Mike had a start I remember it did not go good it was me Nancy Flowers and Ronnie Snicker all sitting by each other our seats were all by each other you're in the upper decks in the Dodgers stadium and those fans are on another level of fandom like I've seen Braves fans die hard but this is another level I had an 80 year old lady telling me to f off f you wow f to you <laughs> yeah and I'm like because uh, we all had like personalized stuff on so they knew we were family yeah. And but little does she know, like it's the pitcher's wife, the catcher's wife, and the coach's wife all sitting 
in the most nerve-wracking game right now of the season. And oh, she didn't care. No, she was waiting for this moment. I hope she got to see the moment. <laughs> I'm still thinking of her like three years later. <laughs> I hope she got the moment. And I think I had Jed on my lap at the time. She was, like, telling me this was a kid on my lap. Um, oh, my gosh. So they're crazy. And I remember after that game, they lost. But And after they had lost, I'm not sure. We had one more game after that. So we, as you leave, you take escalators down. And they, like, kind of crisscross, if you're familiar with the stadium. And you can see people going the other way as you're going down. And they're just screaming at all of us wives, like, F you, you guys suck, like, screaming, all these obscenities. And you're, like, with kids, and, like, you're, wow. all, getting, you're all getting escorted from, one, from the family section and the family room that they had set up for you to the buses. Well, the buses are outside right by these stairs where the fans come down to the parking lot. So you have it all the way to the buses, like, you're getting yelled at. And, like, Did they follow I you? Know. Yeah, like, it's either the same ones or new ones. It's just, like, you just keep walking past. And if you have one piece of Braves flair on, they will look you in your soul and say, <laughs> go, Dodgers, go. Like, so whenever you guys figured out this was going to be free agency, you guys probably weren't going to be back with the Braves. Was that hard, or were you kind of like, all right, next chapter, whatever? That's when we were, like, ready to go. Yeah. Like, we're like, okay, like, let's, you know – it came down to a lot of like politics with baseball with Mike and why he didn't make an appearance. They were ready to go in Arlington. Like they're ready to go. They just, there was a reason why they didn't need him, And that's, that's fine. But I think as a player, you're like, I'm ready for blood. Like I'm ready to go out there and like serve all these people that like rode my back and were my cheerleaders and then turned their back on me. So I'm ready yeah. to just, cause I remember who called him after that game. And like, what was it? Was it a game seven? Like I don't even game remember five. Game five, yeah, <laughs> I remember that. So, yeah, because the game before that when he had, like, the whole seven innings of shutout ball or whatever yeah. it was, I was in the owner's suite with, like, his daughter-in-law, like, his son's wife, and she's super cool. And we were all in there, and, like, you have, like, Ted Turner in there, <laughs> all these big names in there, and, like, it's going good. And I, like, I remember I didn't even watch the game live on the field – Watched on the TV in the owner's suite the whole time because I was like, it's going good. I don't want to move. Um, and then the next, that game five, I went with all the same people. We went to the same suite. And when it's, we were actually, no, we were down in SunTrust Club. We were not in the same suite. We went down to SunTrust Club. And, oh my God, I was sitting there with Chelsea and her. And I just remember like, Freddie missing that. Like, I don't know. I just seen something go through. It was like, it didn't make it to first. I just know it wasn't in the glove. Yep. And I'm like, here comes another run. I don't even know how many were on the board at that time. I, not shitting you, I didn't even finish my meal. I, <laughs> we all looked at each other and we're like, time to go. We got up and like Chelsea went to her seat. I don't even know where she went. And like, she was like, oh shit moment. And I'm an oh shit moment. I grabbed my kids out of the daycare and we left the stadium. We got out. During, there. is it like in the very beginning? We got out of there before the inning was even over. We are wow. already in the car flying home. Wow. Because I know in those moments how fans get. And yeah. we at that time had full tea all over us. My kids had it on them. And I remember in all-star games, they made Josh Hader's family, like, take off all their jerseys when all that stuff hit the Twitter so I was, I'm like, I don't need anybody coming up to us and awkwardly telling us to take the jerseys off because mentally to me, that'll be so hurtful than like yeah. just leaving, then like just get the fuck out of there. So we got out of there. But like, that's just those moments people don't understand. Like, ugh. like yeah, what that, do you stay? Like, I, I was just kind of like, I gotta go. <laughs> that, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Specifically. We came back and picked him up. Like we came back. And oh, you him. did. You, well, no, you don't leave a soldier out there to, like, <laughs> you got to bring back the body, right? <laughs> no, man, was that, was that a long car ride? ride? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but no, because somebody called during the car ride home and it made That's it all good. okay. That's they good. said, you know what, I think, I don't know who it was, some big guy, some big guy up there. And <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he said, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Stuff and like I remember um, Tim Grover, because I had messaged 
Tim Grover, which is Michael Jordan's um, mental coach. I had messaged him after the game because I have been pushing for Mike to go to a mental coach forever because I just read about it. I'm sick of people saying it. Mike doesn't want to do it. So I reached out to Tim. I had reached out to Tim earlier in the season when it was falling apart. And I said, Tim, like, look, I'm Brittany fulton wife. I'm Mike fulton wife. I'm looking for help. Things he's with all started last year. Things have just gone off the table, like, ever since – then and after that game five he messaged me that night and he was like don't worry the best of the best have to go through this to be the best of the best I've seen this happen to the best of the best and the only thing you can do is get up and move forward and then that like documentary came out this year with him and I was like yeah see? <laughs> <laughs> see I told you like just keep going so this is gonna be this year will be exciting because I'm like I have my money on you before we go um, I want to talk about your business because I think oh, yeah. what, what a lot of people um, don't realize too is that a lot of these players' wives, coaches' wives, whatever, they've got their own stuff going. They've got you know a job or, or whatever, and mm-hmm. you've started this business. Tell me a little bit about it and how all that got started. Um, so I basically got – people think like it got started because like, oh, they thought like financially I needed it or <laughs> people were like, kind of guessing at where like they would like, I don't know, people would just tell me stuff and I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> um, I kind of started it for my own independence because like, you know, like, yeah, you, like, oh yeah, like change in the matter of minutes. Like my, I, my week could be going good and I've like seen hell like some weeks. So I think I just wanted that something to do on my own, you know, like something I have as a passion project and that's this. So um, I'm not like a huge lash wear, but I do wear them and I just don't have the time to get extensions. So that's why I like the strip lashes and then the liner. I've never been able to apply them. So the glue liner makes it so easy. It's been great. And it just took off faster than I thought it would and better yeah. than I thought it would. I was like, if it just covers the target bills, that's cool. Like fun the target little, bills. Side, <laughs> side thing, you know, but now it's like so busy. I'm like, Mike drops me off at the post office sometimes every day and I'm like dropping off order. It's fun. But that's awesome. I think I'm trying to re rig it all to like, go a subscription base and make it a little bit easier at home for us because we're going to get ready to move. Like we're going to be kind of transitional and I got to make the business run with that too. So I really appreciate you wanting to do this because I was so excited to talk to you and I just, <laughs> I love your perspective. You've got like a really, um, a good perspective. B you live a psychotic lifestyle and I just wanted people to yeah, like nobody be mad at me if I like got the times and dates wrong. I just, <laughs> it wasn't you, but it was somebody. <laughs> just so you know, it could be wrong. Listen, I, like I told you, I don't even know, like, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what year it is. I just these days maybe when we're like ronnie's age we'll just remember it all like an encyclopedia and like, i don't know because i don't remember it now so i'm not sure how it's working in my instagram so i have to scroll back and be like oh it was game five okay <laughs> well at least you know now on game five you know i think i've been saying game seven my whole life because Oops. Whatever. I mean, oh, well. relatively the same thing ish, I guess. Well, I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Oh, man. Don't you just love her? Okay, full disclosure we talked for literally almost two hours. It was just like chatting with a friend, and I had to condense that down as best as I could because, you know, she, like many of the women, have been with their husbands for quite a while now, and so there's just so many stories to be told. And she is just so much fun, and it makes me really excited to have some more athlete wives on the show. Uh, Just (laughs) what a blast. Love it. Absolutely love it. All right. This is always the point in the podcast where I tell you guys who is coming up next, who to look forward to for the next episode. And it is Mary Beth Smart. Kirby Smart's wife is coming on the show, and she is awesome. If you didn't know, she was a basketball player at UGA, but her and Kirby are five and a half years apart, so his playing days didn't overlap when she played. She's also in the record books for basketball for real. She she holds a three-point record at UGA. Look it up. She's the best. And she's really genuine and cool and down to earth. So another great perspective, uh, someone who has the weight of winning a national championship on their shoulders every day. We talked all about that. We played a really fun game too. So make sure you tune in and that'll be dropping next week. But until then, be great, be blessed, be healthy, and I'll catch you next time. This is Married to the Game.